Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to ask the age-old question, which video card is best for virtual reality? For PC VR, you want to get into it, you want to just go all out, let's find out. All right, if you're wanting to get into PC VR, this is a question that you're definitely going to ask. What video card is best? for virtual reality. Now there's two answers to this. One is a subjective answer and the other one is an objective answer and we are going to tackle both of those. Objectively, the best card for virtual reality is the one that is the strongest, right? No brainer. It has the most horsepower. It has the highest benchmarks. You just go for that. And if money no, is no option, if money is absolutely no option and you like money, no problem. The card to get is the NVIDIA Titan RTX. The NVIDIA Titan RTX would be the card to get. And it can be had for a mere $2,500. That's right, $2,500 starting price, and it goes up from there. I've seen different places it's sold. Or if you're like, eh, well, you know, that's a little bit excessive. Um, so objectively, because right now that's the strongest card, that's the one you would get. The next one down from that, it's uh, it's so cheap in comparison. It's $1,200, yeah. So if you're like, eh, I can spend $1,200 on a video card, then you wanna get the NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti. Bam, that's it, that's it. That would be the next card down. Now, interesting note, and this is, this video is gonna turn out a little bit different than I originally thought. The thing I wanna talk about is how you can get the same performance of this card for much less than $1,200. You can get a video card which has the same performance, or should I say, had the same performance? Still is very, very close. Now there aren't a whole lot of people uh, paying $1,200 for the 2080 Ti, although if you see people on YouTube, it seems like they all have a 2080 Ti. Yeah, 2080 Ti. Everybody who has some kind of VR setup on YouTube, they're all doing 2080 Ti's. That's great, uh, not me. Uh, but I did just upgrade. I did just upgrade, but it wasn't a 2080 Ti. You can find a lot of people angry about what NVIDIA's done with inflating their prices. In fact, there's quite a few uh, YouTube videos about people raging on NVIDIA for doing this. But they can. They're at the top. And until recently, they really didn't have any competition, so they had not really any reason to come down on their pricing. See, when NVIDIA would release a flagship card, it would be like 700 bucks, right? And that's like, holy cow, $700. But then crypto mining drove the prices up, like practically doubled the prices. So a $700 card was then going for $1,200 because of crypto mining. And then if people could get it at 700 somehow, or somebody was selling it at MSRP, people would brag about getting a card at MSRP, which is crazy, right? Who brags about buying something at the MSRP, you want to get it under that, but no. The prices for these video cards were so out of control that getting it at MSRP was amazing in comparison. So what happened was the crypto mining drew, the crypto mining drove the prices of the cards up and up and up, and Nvidia saw that, hey, there's gamers paying $1,200 for these video cards. These aren't crypto miners, they're just buying them to play games. Wow, we can charge a lot more money and people will pay it. And we don't even have to have a coupon day like Jurassic Park. Now, yeah, again, there's a lot of people angry about this, but not to the point where Nvidia is like worried about it. They're like, eh, here's, here's a lower tier card. You can buy that one. And if you've noticed lately, they have a lot of crazy 1660, 1660 Ti, 1600. I don't know, everybody's mad about their weird lineup of the 1600s right now, whatever. Now, the card I wanna talk about is the GTX 1080 Ti. This card, it was $700 on release and it was it was a high price. People were like, wow, that's a high price. And then crypto mining drove it up and then people were buying them or selling them for $1,200. So this is the card I wanna talk about. Why, why do I wanna talk about a $700 card? Because you can now get it for between $450 and $550 used on eBay. Like I just got one, actually I got a Zotac refurbished from Zotac. Uh, it only has a 90 day warranty, but I'm gonna just hammer it and hopefully it'll be fine. And that one cost me like 439. 
Now, sometimes you can buy one used from somebody who can transfer the warranty. Some of them are have transferable warranties. Some of them don't. Like there was a guy selling one kind of locally. He was like a couple hours away for $400 that had a transferable warranty. I didn't have the money at the time. I couldn't buy it. So anyhow, I got a 1080 Ti. And interesting thing is that when the 2080 Ti's first came out, they had the same performance as the 1080 Ti's. In fact, in some cases, the 1080 Ti's beat them. Now that's no longer the case. Apparently, NVIDIA increased the performance by about 25% on these cards with driver updates. So, but when they first came out, you can find videos right now on YouTube where people are benchmarking the two, and in some cases, the 1080 Ti actually beats out the $1,200 2080 Ti. So, and to be honest with you, I was under the, that same impression when I bought the 1080 Ti. I was like, well, it's the same performance, and then I learned later, no, it's not the same performance anymore but it's still pretty epic. And uh, <clears throat> here's a couple of shots. Of, like I, I upgraded from a, I upgraded from my GTX 980. I just had a GTX 980. The minimum specs for VR is a 970, GTX 970. I had a 980 and it worked pretty well, but I had a, a pretty beefy system. I have a 5280K, 8250K, I think it's a 5280K. I can't remember. I'll put a little note here if I said it wrong. Um, and I have it overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz and it's running six cores, so 12 threads, 16 gigs of RAM. So your overall, the rest of your hardware generally to some degree scales with your system performance. So I had pretty good performance with this. Uh, Steam VR will automatically set the render scale based on your system specs. And for this card, it was like 0.98. So I couldn't get like the full resolution, but with the 1080 Ti, I think it defaulted to like 1.5 or something like that. I don't know if I necessarily can tell the difference, but it works fine. Maybe I have a little bit less stuttering from, or maybe I had a little bit of stuttering with this, like when it goes to re-projection, re reprojection. I might have said that wrong, where it like simulates frames, it interpolates them, something like that. But what I actually first got was this. Now this is an AMD RX 5700, and this is AMD's top of the line card. Uh, actually the XT version is, the RX 5700 XT is top of the line. And there's only a $50 price difference between the two if you get the this version with the blower and you can increase the performance of the non XT version with a firmware upgrade to the XT version uh, now there is a difference in compute cores the XT version has more compute cores than the non XT version but it's not a lot it's it's very small difference and this is a great card. It's really, really good. A lot of people will say that it matches the performance of the 1080 Ti or that it's very, very similar. I would say it's very similar. I would definitely not say it matches it, but it's really close. And so why did I get the 1080 Ti and why am I not using this? In fact, I'm just gonna turn around and sell this. And I have mixed feelings about selling this card because I really like it and I had plans for it, which I didn't do. My plans were to flash the BIOS to an XT version, and I was gonna open it up, and there's like a mod where you can put washers on here to increase the heat sink pressure on the GPU, and I was also gonna replace the thermal compound. It's supposed to improve thermal performance on these. I was all about to do it. I was excited about to do it. I was excited about it. This only cost like, I think on rebate, I got like 280 bucks, and it came with like Borderlands 3. So I was excited, totally excited. So I put this in and I fire stuff up and I crank up the render scale, which I don't remember what it was to. It might've been to 1.5 as well on this one. And I fire up my favorite VR game, Pavlov VR, and it just crashes. It can't handle Pavlov. It handles everything else I've tried, but Pavlov, it would crash. Now, I don't know if that's still the case because it there's been so many updates to Pavlov, but when that happened, I was like, eh, I can't wait for AMD to figure this out. I can't, like I'm, like Pavlov VR is like my crack addiction. I just love that game. So I had mixed feelings about not using this card because the 1080 Ti is an older card. 
Uh, it came out like at, at least two years before this. And this is a newer card, newer technology. Maybe this is going to get even better with driver updates. Who knows, maybe this will even get better than 1080 Ti. But so I am not super excited about selling this. I kind of feel bad about selling it. And I'm still kind of tempted to think, well, why don't I just try it again and sell my 1080 Ti? I could probably make another 100 bucks off my 1080 Ti on eBay. This has got the newer technology. It's got really, really amazing uh, X265 encoding on the GPU. And apparently you can do like multiple threads of it using FFmpeg without any slowdown. I, there's some video on uh, Epos Vox, I think is his name. And he shows how he's doing all these 265 encodings with this at the same time. Whereas on the NVIDIA card, you can only do one. My configurations with the AMD Radeon RX 5700 and 5700 XT performed in some cases significantly better and in other cases just slightly better or the same as the same configuration with a RTX 2080 Ti. Uh, they did have some complaints about the 264 encoding. And that's another thing because I don't do a whole lot of live streaming. I do like a few times I've done live streaming and the NVIDIA cards are better at that. So maybe something will change with the driver update for this card. But as of right now, I'm, I'm going to sell it. I'm kind of bummed out about that. I would have kept it. Now there is a, an increase in performance. I am getting better performance on the 1080 Ti, but I can only see it in benchmarks. I don't, I don't put the 1080 Ti Running with the 1080 Ti, I don't see like a crazy difference. I'm not like, like, I wouldn't be able to tell. If you were like, hey, which card are you running on? Can you tell by the performance? I would be like, nope, I can't tell. I would definitely recommend this card. So my, my recommendations, okay, so the subjective answer is, well, what's your budget? What are you wanting to do? If you're just getting into VR and you're strapped for cash, the minimum specs are a, a GTX 970. This GTX 980, I bought it a couple years ago. Uh, it was 250 bucks at the time. Now they're going for like $100 or less on eBay. Um, and it worked fine. I have, Again, I had a strong system. I have a strong system. But if you just want the, if money's no object and you just have money you want to blow, then the RTX Titan, Nvidia Titan, is the one to get, 2,500 bucks. The next one down from that, $1,200 is 2080 Ti or if you want to only spend between 450 and 550 bucks, or even sometimes, uh, sometimes you can get them for lower than $400 on eBay. Sometimes it's kind of rare. Uh, you can get the 1080 Ti. And uh, so my, my recommendation is either a used 1080 Ti or an RTX or an RX 5700 XT, unless you want to mod the non XT version. Modding is fun. If you're not into modding, just get the XT version. It's only 50 bucks more uh, if it's a non-AIB version. So that's it. And uh, you can check out check out these performance check out the, the uh, these benchmarks. Okay, so here on Tom's hardware, here's all. Now I don't know what the percentage means. Like maybe it's the percentile. It's definitely not percentage of performance. Okay, so the $2,500 Nvidia Titan RX comes in at 100%. Okay, it's at 100% on this chart. And then the $1,200 NVIDIA GTX or NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti comes in at 98.4%. 98.4% uh, uh, to 100%, that's what, another $1,200? And then the, okay, the GTX 1080 Ti, which is so much less, is about a third of the cost of the 2080 Ti, you know? And it's like, what, a fifth of the cost or less, maybe even a fourth? fifth, a sixth of the Titan RTX. That comes in at 96%. So 96% on this chart, you can get the 1080 Ti for four to five hundred dollars on eBay or even sometimes on the Zotac website refurbished. The Radeon RX 5700 XT, which which the blower version can be had for 350, comes in at 95.8%. So really close to the 1080 Ti and it's significantly cheaper. My only my only reason is compatibility driver issues. That's why I'm selling this thing. And again, that was like three weeks ago that I tried this. Those issues might be resolved by now. I don't know. That's my recommendation. If you guys have any questions or if you have a different opinion or think I should have covered something else, 
please let me know. Thank you for watching my video, and I will catch you guys later. Thanks.